Over the years, this site has seen a wide range of articles. We're now on our third year of doing this. And despite my efforts to get more technical content posted up here, I've just lagged mainly due to setup time. But one thing I've learned while just maintaining the site in general is people have a lot of questions because interpretations can just be so diverse. So before we even really get started with anything, I just want to say that application and reading or just learning are two very different things. And so um, just be aware of the fact that whenever anything hits your brain for the first time and you start to learn it versus the point where you actually start to apply it successfully, uh, there's a huge gap in the middle there that needs to get filled. And, and really the only way to fill that gap is going to be through your own um, effort, labor, uh, sensibilities, discipline, etc. So um, just bear that in mind. So that being said, picking levels is something I've been very critical of over the years, especially coming from all these broker analysts, the you name it crowd. But what I like to call liquidity gaps is sort of on my major hit list. It's something I've been using for many years now. And uh, the first time I even really talked about these to anyone was at a workshop I did with Chris in Australia about a year ago. And since then I've had um, blog posts about it, but I've never really uh, described anything uh, in depth, which is sort of the, the, the point of what we're doing here today. So um, they're basically just major points of supply and demand. Uh, they get monitored heavily. Uh, they can act as either price turning points or price targets, which of course can be interchangeable. So first, let's just talk about the entire gap concept in trading. Um, strategies surrounding gaps are of course nothing new. Um, they're in markets that have definable opens and closes. Uh, we've got an open and a close on every single day in the stock market, of course, creating a gap. Okay, And in FX, we've only got really the, the Friday to Sunday stretch to look at in terms of anything physical. Uh, so what about the rest of the time? Well, uh, there's a term out there called gap risk. And gap risk just basically refers to the fact that, let's say in a situation like this, uh, I'm long down here, okay, and I see spi uh, price spiking higher. And gap risk occurs in the fact that there's a risk that this gap or this spike will fill, okay, and I'm out of money, all right? So uh, in terms of the actual anatomy of this thing, what we're looking at now is just a common gap this is the most... Uh, typical situation that you're going to find um, with these. You've got a price zone down here that's created, and then all of a sudden you've got a big injection of demand down here. Okay, and you've got more here and more here and more here, uh, creating a spike and uh, just a, or a, for our purposes a gap. And uh, until finally price comes up, hits a resistance point, and starts to fade. Okay, and whether it be a mechanical reason or a psychological reason, there is an intent to push price back down to the origin of where all this demand came from, okay? So, uh, and when that happens, uh, gap risk becomes considerably lower, okay? And we start to see a consolidation point down here uh, up to a full-blown reversal, okay? So that's the general concept, and that's the common gap. But there are different types of gaps, and not all gaps fill. That is very important to realize. In order to distinguish those that do versus those that don't, we can categorize them, right? And the four terms that we have here are nothing new. Uh, they've been written about in many books for years. Um, let's just go down them, though, for our purposes and apply them to our market. So common gap is the one that we just talked about. Uh, they happen in either a consolidated or a trending environment. Um, basically, just price spikes up comes that lower and closes the gap. We're sort of looking for an immediate fill on that one. Uh, exhaustion gap also fills, okay? Uh, also known as just V tops or bottoms. We get a spike or gap into an area of heavy order flow, okay? And price will hit that order flow and just quickly fade off, retrace, filling the gap almost immediately. Um, breakaway gap. Breakaway gaps we are not looking to fill, okay? so. Uh, when you see a breakaway gap, you're looking to play momentum on a situation like this. You basically got a heavy area of support resistance. You've got hit, 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 hit on a level until finally you've got heavy racing activity coming down into that level until finally it snaps, okay? Um, and it just continues trading lower, all right? We're not looking for those to fill. A runaway gap, also a no-fill situation. You create a price bottom, price comes up, consolidates, spikes higher, and creating your gap and just keeps on going, okay? And uh, runaway gaps do just that, they run away, okay? We're not looking for a fill on those. Um, our first chart here is a good chart. We've got a couple clean examples of different types of gaps here. The first, uh, let's start at the top here, we've got the exhaustion gap. Um, this is actually a physical gap from a, a Friday to Sunday close uh, open. 
So we've got uh, gap higher here into this resistance zone, um, picking up a bunch of orders right above the level where your orders normally right above or below a level, picks these up and comes back down and starts to fade, fade fast. Okay, and we fill this gap up and uh, creating into our, our breakaway gap here. Okay, and the breakaway gap basically comes down and snaps this major support level. Okay, this is a major support level because we got on the bottom here, we've got hit, 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 hit. Okay, that's eight hits on the bottom of this thing before finally um, it broke and price just basically continued trading lower. We've got a couple different points of entry here. We've got backward bounces on trend lines. We've got shelves created after the break. Okay, but again, we're not looking for these to fill uh, just because we've got a heavy, heavy, heavy area of buildup here. So that anticipation or that or the simple, just the sight of that actual break is enough to get traders everywhere to be uh, trading, you know, pretty much biasly in one direction for the rest of the session. Okay, so a lot of anticipation surrounding this level. Very important to note, don't fudge these levels. Uh, if you see something occur where you've got three hits on a level, for instance, and then it breaks, three hits is, is not significant. Okay, uh, eight is. All right, so just make sure you're uh, looking at the, the the right things here okay um, next one uh, chart I want to look at has a more typical situation of what we're going to encounter um, this is a regular environment consolidated uh, we've got a lot of common gaps over here and you can see how quickly these fill on a regular basis I want to start with this one over here we've got a nice gap higher comes up and then comes back down to the origin of this gap where this gap began and uses it as support okay and we've also got a reference point over here Okay, before finally we fade up. Okay, we've got another gap created on the move back lower here. And uh, that hits, gets some toughness, reaches beyond it, goes even higher. Okay, comes back down to the origin of this gap, creates some consolidation. That fails, that comes down, fills up this gap. Okay, then you get your consolidation, comes back up. We've got a little guy over here that started, comes up, touches that, this fades and comes lower. Okay, um, so in terms of using these, um, one way that I'll commonly look at them is in terms of price targets, okay, for this reason alone. Okay, if we see a, a gap occurring or a gap is present, okay, we're looking for the gap to fill in order to basically satisfy us and, and finish our trade, all right? Um, and this is a 15-minute chart, but again, these are applicable to all. And we'll look at a one-hour chart a little later. Um, so that brings me into this area over here. We've got a runaway gap, okay? And the runaway gap basically comes up to the origin of this spike, and starts meeting some toughness, okay? Um, once we get past this break zone, once we get past the origin, we're basically looking um, beyond this range, okay? We're looking for a stretch at that point. And this one went about double the range here on this one, added the, as did this over here, okay? Right in the beginning of our chart, we've got this gap. Here's the origin, okay? Price comes up, meets a little toughness. Again, we've got a 15-minute chart, so we've got some fighting going on here, but eventually it just snapped beyond it and did about the same thing, okay? So you can see, uh, in terms of distinguishing them, um, what to look for in terms of any form of continuation on these, okay? So uh, something to bear in mind. Um, next, I just want to shoot down to gap usage. Gaps can be used to dissect price and serve as a very valuable meter in terms of how to read price action. And, um, you know, the old analogy, a, a musician reads music, a chartist reads a chart. Um, these are sort of your notes, okay? When I start my day, uh, gaps are one of the first things I look at, okay? In terms of both drawing levels and defining price targets, I'm looking at gaps uh, to identify those zones. So gaps can be very valuable in that sense. Uh, being aware that a gap exists can either position us properly for entry in a trade or know when to ignore it altogether. And that second point there is probably the most important point. If, uh, say for instance, you have a gap uh, on the previous wave in existence, all right? But you've got a level before the origin of that gap. You're thinking about shorting before the gap gets filled. It could keep you potentially out of a bad trade, knowing that there's a good expectation that the gap is going to fill uh, before you even really got a chance at that. Okay, uh, entry ideas, breakaway gap, enter, uh, entry on a post-break on a retest of the trend line or post-break on a peak of the consolidated range. So let's just take a look at this chart again. And basically, I'm referring to uh, the backward bounce that happened right here or um, shorting on a fade of the shelf that gets created, which is pretty common if this thing's using this and just trades lower. Uh, we're sort of in a dumper already. We usually see a shelf created before any form of 
continuation. Obviously, the most ideal situation is getting up here, but just knowing that this occurrence exists is uh, is enough. All right, you've got a, an exhaustion gap. Seek areas of support or resistance above or below the gap occurrence and seek to fade. Okay, so same thing, sort of going back to our traditional methods here. We're just looking for an area of resistance uh, in order to pick up some order flow. Uh, runaway gap, advanced, I wrote, just simply because of the risk that's involved with it. Trade in line with momentum on a retest of a spike base or similar area post break of the previous gap range. I can talk about the spike base in, in just a second, but let's just go back to this really quickly. Um, in the case of this, we've got the runaway gap comes up here. And the reason I say these are very risky is because you don't get a lot of pullback on these. All right. You, um, it's hard to define your entry and what happens if you're wrong. Okay. You're basically opening up a long position at a peak here and price trades lower. So you need other conditions in place, which in this case to be, um, trading in line with a trend. Okay. But they're very risky again, cause you're not getting a lot of pullback here. Look how small this range is. Um, Common gap, seek to fade or retest of the origin. The major gap, sort of the same thing that we've been talking about from the beginning here and taking profits, take profits at the origin of gap when gap risk becomes considerably lower. Okay, so in this situation, you know, say you're squeezing off a short here, you're taking profits when this area gets beat. Okay, um, I just want to flip over to some live charts really quick. Uh, this is a one hour chart of Euro and uh, this is from our most recent trend uh, moving higher. This is the day we had some uh, debt fears coming back into the market actually get used as a buying opportunity. But in terms of actually drawing your levels, you can see where we put the levels here. We put them right at the origin of this spike where all this activity and noise began. Okay. So in this case, it's right down here. In this case, it's over here. Okay. We're not looking down at the base here. We're looking right above that base. Okay. Uh, just at the point of where this started. All right. We traded higher came, consolidated up a little bit. This created a little spike base for us, which actually ended up getting used over here. If you're looking for more information on that, there is an article posted on the site. Uh, then uh, traded higher, finally came down. Uh, we see we got, even over here, we got an aggressive spike lower, okay, which uh, quickly filled and uh, to the top or the origin of this spike and this gap. Okay, and then we got our resistance here. We finally started using this trend line before we came lower. Uh, and you can see our first major reactionary point was down here at the origin of this spike. Okay, this is about a 50 pip move over here. Uh, broke lower from that until finally we came down here and we sort of got the mother load. Okay, and the full reversal from that area. Okay, so even in terms of drawing support and resistance levels, as I say, these are very valuable and very important to know. They're, they're a must know as far as I'm concerned. So um, it, one more thing before we go, I'm a little... Uh, tight on time here for uploading purposes. But uh, if you're looking for more um, information on this uh, for free, uh, there one of our readers told me about a guy. His name is uh, Sam Seedon Seiden, I think. Don't want to butcher his name, but uh, he does a lot of uh, free webinars at, uh, available on FX Street. I took a look at them. They're, they're quite good. So he uh, looks at this concept in, in sort of a different way. He mainly targets uh, in terms of entry. So uh, just shoot over there if uh, you're looking for some more info. So uh, that's about it for now. Thanks so much for listening, and I will talk to you guys soon.